The big bald man shook his head. You're missing the point. While you're being marched to the scaffold, the headsman takes out a file and sharpens the blade of his axe. The blade is nine inches long and the axe weighs about nine pounds. If he files the blade at an angle, then you have nine inches of keen steel coming down with nine pounds of weight plus all the force that the headsman can put into it and you get a nice clean job of it. But if the headsman draws the file straight across the blade, he dulls it. He put his hand on the iron grating of the cell door. Here, feel this. It becomes as dull as this. Think about something like that coming down on your neck very rapidly. It would not cut. It would only crush and tear. At Bitburg, the first blow only ripped the back of the man's neck and cracked his spine. A physician told me once that when a man's spine cracks at the base of the neck, it causes so much pain that the man almost always goes insane. The second blow severed the man's spinal cord and went partway into his throat. When the man screamed, it was like a loud gurgle and blood spewed from his partially severed neck and when the body tried to rise, the assistant, who was still holding on to the remaining air, would bring it back down. It was like a wobbly hinge opening, spewing blood and then closing again with just a third of the man's neck holding it all together. And all the while the man was screaming that loud, gurgling, painful scream. I would not like to hear a scream such as that here in Berlin. Would you? Both of the condemned men rubbed their throats. And you're saying that if we give the headsman a little something, we could be sure that the blade would be nice and sharp? Asked Rudolph. There would only be a slight tickling sensation. As Nettie was trying to feel the pulse in the man's neck, she felt something hard and round stuck into his neck at the base of the ear. It was like the head of the stick pin that the Englishman was wearing in his tie. I think the man next to me is dead. Oh my God! Let's have a look at him. The Englishman came closer and began examining the man slouched next to her. I'm a doctor. Let me in there. It was the bald-headed man. He felt for the man's pulse, listened to his chest, and then began to administer CPR. For about ten minutes, nobody said anything. I'm afraid he is dead. Nitty bent down by him and whispered, Look at the bottom of his ear. There's something stuck in his neck. There's nothing. But our hope and our strength, you said you would answer all prayers. Well, of course I will. You, you just caught me at a bad time, that's all. Listen, do you know anything about platypuses? Platypuses, oh merciful God? Yeah, you know, they're marsupials. I put them in Australia in that area. I gave them a bill like a duck and a body like an otter and webbed feet like a frog and a tail like a beaver, and, and they lay eggs like a chicken. Bill like a duck, body like an otter, feet like a frog, tail like a beaver, 
eggs like a chicken, creator of the universe and author of its laws? Hey, I was going to give him eyes like a gecko, but I thought it would have been a little bit too over the top. It would have been, oh, beginning and end of all things. But I'm afraid I'm not familiar with them. There was a flash of lightning and a crack of thunder. It was then that we heard it. Sent chills down our spines and the horses all raised their heads and whinnied like they'd bit into something that tasted real bad. It was off in the distance. It sounded far away, but you could tell it was there. It was, it was like when you first hear a train coming down the tracks. You know it's miles away, but you still know it's coming. Joe Dunninger was about done with my leg and he looked up into the west and we all did, and there was no mistaking of it. Over the ridge, back where we'd been, there was a huge funnel-shaped cloud, and we could see it was sucking everything around it right up into the sky. Fragrant flowers saw it, too. It's coming for you. It'll bring the dead, and they will pursue you and kill you. You think it's a tornado that you hear? Those are the screams of my people. That is their battle cry, and they're coming for you, all of you. She turned to face me. But you, I will kill myself. That, I promise. We could see all kinds of things going up in the sky. Sand and cactus mostly. What looked like the remains of a teepee still on fire. Other things, even at a distance, we could see black shapes that actually looked like horses kicking and rearing and twisting every which way, being siphoned right up to the top of the sky and then just vanishing. I didn't see no dead bodies, but if it was sucking up everything else, I sort of figured they must be going right up along with everything else. At that time, all we thought about mostly was getting the hell out of there. At this point, the clean-shaven man with the long face snapped open his satchel case. I agree wholeheartedly that you need a means of leaving this veil of tears that is sufficiently steeped in romance and worthy of its task. And I think I have it. My name is Mordecai Vanderyacht, sir, and I'm with the Rhode Island Rat po the the Rhode Island Society for the Preservation of Historical Maritime Memorabilia. I have recently acquired something that may be of great interest to you. Frankly, sir, guns and knives are a messy way of doing it. Did you know that when Captain Kidd was hanged in England, Five of his lovers committed suicide on the scaffold steps. Five of them? Five of them, sir. The captain gave them this bottle, which I purchased at an auction in London for $500. You see the skull and crossbones there above the word arsenic? That was the symbol that Captain Kidd used on the flag that flew from his ship and on every item he owned. Whenever you find that symbol on an artifact, you can be sure that it was once the personal property of Captain Kidd and is the genuine article. Poison is quick and painless and refined. I think that a gentleman of your good breeding would just then the coach came to an abrupt stop, causing the nausea in the young man's stomach to approach a point of critical mass. The driver dismounted and told the passengers 
that one of the horses had picked up a stone in its shoe and he needed to remove it.